Good evening, everyone. My name is Heath Haskins, Code Primate, and this is Let's Make a Game. I'm going to do it a little bit differently tonight. Um, basically, what I want is I want to be able to grow trees. And what I've done is I've added the, the plugin that Defaultio had created called the, the Tree Generator. Oh, gosh. I, didn't, I don't have it on this one. Oh, 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 no. Plugin folder. I don't have it. Where is it? <clears throat> Anyhow. All right. Let's go manage pro plugins real quick. Uh, find plugins, please. I'll just show you what this is. Um, library, tree. It is trees, I guess. Tree, trees. Um, trees, plural. Under plugins. Uh, tree, gen. Generate trees. Hmm. Take them all out. Where is it? There it is. Tree generator by default. It's like in the top of all plugins. Right there. So we'll just add this in. Install. Okay. <clears throat> so I'll show you what this does. Basically, you come over here and you click on place a tree. And then you can do like load. Uh, if you do a standard tree like this, and you just click, it creates a tree. Right? I don't like that. Um, you can change its um, leaf material from smooth plastic to like uh wait is it is it smooth plastic or is it i thought there's mesh there it is take this out and put in block like that and then it becomes like a blocky tree yay um it's doing cylinders instead of um uh squares and same with these so i don't like those but what i wanted to do tonight sorry um distracted I don't want to do any of that. I want to generate a car or a uh, not cars. I want to generate. Hold on, I'm just gonna take all those out. There we go. Um, generate a placement system. So um, well, let's go over to model. I'll just create a part. I'm just gonna call this part um, test gen spot. There we go. And we, we have to simulate what it would look like, kind of, to scale. And I have to make a couple of these, so control duplicate. Control duplicate. So those right there, those are going to be my test gen spots. Oops, not that one. Uh, that one there. And I'm just going to group those together and call it... Oops. We're going to call it the test gen... Model, mod, model, model. It's an E or yeah, it's an E. E yeah, like that. Test gen model. Um, in my workspace, I'm just going to create a local or not a local script. I'm just going to create a server side script. Server script. Psh, come on. Server script. It's just called a script, by the way. And this is going to be called test gen script. Don't you love the names that I come with up with? Like blah. <laughs> um by the way, today is Memorial Day. So if you don't know what that is, um it is to recognize those who have fallen for um in the military during active service. Um defending the country and it started out as um, Decoration Day, where you would go and you would decorate the graves of those who had fallen. And then um, I believe it was uh, the Civil War, um, like 640,000 uh, US soldiers alone had died. And um, one of the generals declared it as an actual holiday and actually made it a thing. So that's when it got changed to Memorial Day. <clears throat> which was later actually um, presented in uh, Congress. So, there, okay. Moving forward, let's do this. So our test gen script, um, I'm just going to do 4x equals 1 to 10. We're, we're just going to generate 10 times. I would do this uh, much differently. Oh, sorry. Comma. 
comma one. Okay, so this says um, x is going to represent one. Go to ten and step by one, two. Um, test. I'm going to make a variable and we're going to call it um, test place places equals workspace dot test gen model test gen model that's what I called it right yeah that's that's it we're gonna get children get children this way we have all the test gen things so um, math dot random uh, what, what are our variables first number second number um, one comma three. I think, hold on, let me print that real quick. I don't know if it does, uh, yeah, it does whole numbers. If you do like zero to one, then it doesn't. Ooh, thank you for the subscribe. Who was that? Uh, new mushroom, welcome. Welcome to the uh, coding family. <laughs> so that does generate one through three, so one to three. But what we want is um, from test places, like hashtag, hashtag test places dot floor, math dot floor, I believe, and math dot ceiling. Hashtag test places. Let's try that. It should be one through three. The lowest number possible. Oh, what did I not close? I didn't close something. Oh, I need another one right here at the end. <clears throat> so basically what I'm doing right here. Oh, stop, 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 stop. And play. I did three times three. <laughs> stop. Okay, I think that only works with um, float numbers, possibly. Unless it generate, yeah, it's generating three ten times. So let's just say um, one, one to math dot ceiling. Actually, we don't even need that because it's going to be a whole number anyway. It's a count. Uh, anytime you have like a table and you put a hashtag in front of it, it gives you, it returns you a count of those things inside that table. So that should be a one through three. I got 13 times. What? That doesn't sound right. Oh, one comma three. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Print. Oh, hold on. I, I took out the math dot random. Silly goose. All right. There we go. We want to go from one to. There we go. Math dot random. One to however many we got. Stop. Can I just run? Yeah, I can just run it. There we go. That way I don't have to worry about... Oh, what happened? No, I didn't do it right. Can I just run? Play. We'll just play. Didn't even print it that time. What the... What in the world? Stop. <clears throat> Math dot ran... Print. <laughs> Math dot random. Ah! Here we go. Two, one, three, three, two, three, 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 two, three. So it is now picking a random, uh, random one. So we will do this. Um, selected, uh, selected planter equals, and we're going to say test places and then give it a one of these 
So normally what I would do is I could do test places, which is going to be all the children of those models. And I could do one for the first model we found, or three for the third model that we found, two for the second model, and so forth. So however many children we found, that's what I'm going to select. So our center position, center pose equals select planter dot position. So this should be um, the center position of that particular one. Come here, there we go. All right, play. Yay, so we found the center positions. And I can always check those by going to these themselves. Let's just select each one, and we're going to make them nice, even numbers. So, uh, see how these have got numbers at the end? Take that out. Take that out. Take that out. And we're going to do the same for these. Everything's nice and even. By the way, I love this uh, this tango. It's a it's a tango. That song. There they are. Yay! So we, now we have um, each one of the planters, and I can actually uh, I can make these bigger. I think. Yeah, we'll make these a little bit bigger. But um, so I don't want a tree to grow down here on the sides of these models. Same thing like these. And and what this is this is a big uh, this is a small scale of what this whole place is. So like, for example, instead of just looking for the planters, I would go and I would search um, land, main area, and then anything that's grass. So all this grass stuff. I could, I could search all of these for grass, and that would count. Okay? That's, that's the point of this. Um, the next thing that I wanted to do in my math in, in thinking is I only want to generate something on top of these blocks. I don't want it on the sides. I don't want it down here below, off to the left or the right, none of that. So our Y axis, the up and down axis has to be the top most part right here. All right. And the way we're going to generate that is like this. Um, we're just going to say y pose equals, and we could do local on all this because all this is going to be inside this loop. Local y pose. Our local y pose is going to be center pose dot y. I think that will work. Possibly. So the center most position is always going to be y. Now, um, oh wait, no it's not. Plus, um, selector, select planter dot size dot y divided by two. Okay, so, sorry, in my math I was thinking, um, we need, we need this top part, so, Wherever the center pose is, our X and Z factors don't really matter at the moment. But if you look, right, if we did exact center, I mean, it would be right here in the center of the block. We don't want that. We want to be up here. So you have to do Y plus half of its height. So whatever its position is, plus half of its size on the Y axis. That'll, that'll bring us up to, to here. So this... This should now have us right here, level playing field. Now we need the X and Y, or not X and Y, and I'm thinking different dimensions. We need the X and the Z coordinates, all right? And we're going to random not, randomize them for the maximum number and the minimum number that they can be. This should be our placement spot position. So, um, local, expose equals um, so okay we need this the selector position 
dot x plus actually no so we, we have the position that'll be the center so then we need to plus math let's see um, select planter dot size dot x divided by 2 right so it's going to be plus or minus half of that math dot random and we, we can do plus or minus zero and then maximum of plus or my oh I guess uh, hold on not so it'd be the opposite of size divided by two which would give us negative so if it's 10 all right select planner size x divided by 2 which would be 5 not 5 would be negative 5 so we could take our position minus 5 or our position plus 5 for the x position I hope I'm explaining this correctly because this is actually pretty confusing and we're gonna go ahead and place this inside parentheses as well just for clarity and then um, we want to do the same with the Z position so I'm just gonna say Z pose is Z and the sizes are Z and Z so that should give us a random position on one of the select um, things I haven't done my hair today I hope you don't mind the fluff so um, once we have our X Y and Z positions we're going to do um, blah equals uh, we'll do a local blah equal uh, local blah equals instance dot new uh, is it a, a ball no it, it's it's a sphere 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 no that's a sphere handle what about block let's just do a block part new part part <clears throat> there we go <laughs> oh okay law dot type dot shape shape equals enum dot shape dot part type dot ball block cylinder dot mesh type dot sphere there we go uh, blah dot size and this is this is just for small scale equals um, vector three dot new and we just want it to be one 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 it's just gonna be small actually we could we could even go smaller 0. 0.5 comma 0. 0.5 comma 0. 0.5 so this is gonna be a little ball blah dot block color equals enum dot block color. No, enum dot part no dot color color no color block color hmm. brick color dot pink is there is there a pink <laughs> brick color blah dot brick color dot color whatever brick color equals brick color dot pink I don't have a pink should we do just red oh, we could do red I think uh, blah dot parent equals oh sorry anchored we need to do anchored equals true 
blah.parent equals workspace. We're going to place it into the workspace. Blah.position equals, all right, this is where we need to do vector.new. And then we're going to pass in x pose, y pose, z pose. So that should work. Uh-oh. Number expected and got bullion. All right, all right, all right, all right. Fine. Negative. Negative. Stop. And play. Whenever you put a negative around something on the outside. Oh, that didn't work. Blah dot shape equals let's just do an enum dot block type dot shape hmm well, let's just leave it alone we'll just make it a block play excited. I don't know if this is actually going to work or not. Oh, <laughs> I think it worked. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nice. And they should all be in the workspace. stop. Let's go back over to the test gen script. Uh, let's call these blah.name equals simulated tree. And can I place a folder for them? I probably could. In fact, I should probably do that. Okay. Um, let's just create Create a new folder. New insert object folder. This is going to be called uh, simulated trees. And then check this out. Uh, let's create a uh, little gen part here. So, wink. And this we can make hot pink right there. So whenever I touch this, then I'm going to generate some trees. That way I can just jump on it and keep keep generating if I want to. Anchored, I'm looking for anchored. There we go. We're gonna call this um, gin trees. Gin trees. <laughs> no, that wasn't supposed to be a name, but that's, that's pretty cool. All right. Uh, in our tree script, it doesn't really have to be anywhere. Ooh, we do not want it in there though. Let's uh, let's place these back into the workspace. <laughs> so um, let's go back over to our gen script. There we go. Uh, gen script, and we're gonna we're actually gonna put this into a function. So function gen. And the first thing that we want to do is we're going to check to see if there's anything in simulated trees. So <clears throat> um, we're going to create a new loop or uh, current trees equals workspace dot simulated trees get children. And we're going to make that local. If hashtag current trees then for um, index object uh, for blah blah in pairs current
current trees do. So what I'm going to do is we have to get rid of the trees first, and I'm going to mark that. We need to check and get rid of current trees. 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 <laughs> then this one. Gen new trees on select selected blocks. <clears throat> so for each one of these, we're going to do object destroy. So if there are objects already inside uh, our current trees, it'll go through each one and it'll destroy it. Then it'll generate new trees. So um, game dot workspace dot what do we call it? Gen trees dot touched connect uh, gen. Did I just call it gen? Not very creative, is it? <clears throat> okay, part. So um. Hume equals part dot parent find first child humanoid. And we're going to make it local because everything's got to be local. It doesn't have to be local. Basically, uh, making it local allows us to keep everything confined to this function. That, like, another function on the outside can't call Hume. Like, <sighs> I wonder if that makes sense. Function, this is, uh, this test, here we go. So I can't come up here and be all like, uh, print hume, right? This hume down here does, is not known to this function up here because this is local to this function alone. Now, if I had something outside those two functions like hume equals nil, right? and then I were to take this out right here, then whenever I generate something here, I could print it here. Okay, that's passing the variables in between functions. You have to have something on the outside of the functions, which would be global to the functions inside. Um, yeah, let's keep going. That was just an example. Gonna make this local again. Local. And then we're gonna say, if Hume and can touch, then. Okay. And this is what I was talking about earlier. I'm going to put a variable up here. Can touch equals true. So right here, if we're... Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Um, if we can touch, then can touch equals not can touch. So it becomes a false. That way we we're it's a debounce. It doesn't keep touching. Uh, that's our for loop. So actually, and for loop. This is and if statement. Oops. And this is end function. Whenever you get a whole bunch of ends down here at the end, it's a really good idea to like mark what that was the end of. So can touch. We're gonna come over here. We're gonna go wait for two seconds, and then can touch equals not can touch. This way it toggles it on and off. <clears throat> so now I should be able to walk over the pink part in the middle and it will generate trees every single time, every two seconds. Do, 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 do. Now notice there's no trees there at the moment, that's because I haven't generated any. So here we go. Touch, touch, touch. Oh, it's not destroying the other trees. But it is generating new trees. And we don't have any growing on the sides. We don't have any growing up above. They're all generated on the same area. 
that surface area at the very top. Okay, there, there's a couple <laughs> that are growing a little bit above, but I would say that's okay. It's minimal. And we can always correct it by going down some. So, let's hit stop. Um, if we wanted to, it's an XYZ position on the um, size. So let's do two, like that. Ugh, I really should put my avatar closer. Oh, yeah. Here, stop. We can actually move this. Uh... Oh, I can actually, I can take this and drop it in there. That way I can just move the whole model over. Move. That'll be a little bit more fun. And I can actually scale this up a little bit more. And if we wanted to, check this out. Um, Control D, I'm gonna duplicate this one, move it over here, change its size and scale. Uh, Control, hold on, hold Alt, Control D. Move this one over here. I'm just gonna flatten that one down a little bit. Uh, Alt. D. I have a long piece right over here. Like that. Did I cover up the, the pink? I did. <laughs> Silly goose. Alright, where is it? Wait, where? Oh, there it is. Why is it under the ground? Don't be silly like that. Come on. Can we, uh. Can we like. There we go. Uh-oh. Gin tree is not a valid member of workspace. Oh, 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 oh. It's because I moved it. Silly. Dot test gin model. There we go. There we go. And touch. Why is it? Oh, oh, oh! It's uh, because it's a, uh, it's got the, the thing, the, the, looks like Legos on top. <clears throat> That's why it's generating the weird. Now wait. <laughs> oh, because this is a child of of the model that we're generating. That's awesome. Generate more, generate more, generate more. Let's do this. Um, so, I'm going to add um, debris equals game dot get service debris service. Every time we generate one of these trees, I'm gonna do debris dot add. No colon add item la. How long? Blah. I think let's do two seconds. I don't remember if that's correct. Doing the two like that. So, click one, two. Yep, they're gone. So it's generating different trees, different places. Uh oh, what happened there? That one was way off. Did you see that? Oh. <laughs> okay.
I don't think the parts are anchored, are they? <laughs> All right, right click, select children, and anchor them all. There we go. Now everything's anchored. It, nothing's going to be moving around. So that is how to generate trees in select areas. Boink. In the, the debris service, we would do something different. We would do, like, uh, to make them fall down, you would have them unanchor, turn black, and then um, unbind from all their other joints. So, anyhow, I hope this has been informative, and I hope you've uh, got something out of it, because it's a it's a really good start to a really good script, and I hope you guys enjoyed. <laughs> As always, I really enjoy coding. I enjoy programming. I enjoy coming in here and just playing with scripts. I mean, it's not good for like developing and finishing a game, but it does help. Uh, by the way, if you did want to like generate some money, <laughs> I do have this money scale going, and I will come back to how I fix this. Um, but there's a yellow. Thing in the corner and I believe it's every five minutes you can walk up to it touch it and get one money so if you want I mean that's not really a, a fast rate wait until I have some trees actually generating and I have an axe that can actually chop those and you have a place where you can sell them then then it's going to be on because right now um, this is a simple one model one tree example and it's not really a good example either, but at the same time, this is very much needed. So, thank you everyone for watching this episode of Let's Make a Game with me, Heath Haskins, Code Primate. I will leave this in the game so you can come and generate your own trees if you want to. I should give you some options to like change them, but I'm not going to. <laughs> Love you guys very much. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe down below. Do all those cool things I'm supposed to call out at the end. But in the end, it's up to you. If you want to, go for it. If not, I'm okay with that too. Love you guys very much. Have a great night. And happy Memorial Day. Oh, you don't say happy Memorial Day. Um, I hope you have a good holiday. So, love you guys. Bye! Oh wait, no, I do uh, outro. <laughs>